G'day guys, my name's Dave Trent and welcome to another Throwback Thursday edition of Guitar Zero to Hero Song Tutorial. And in today's lesson, I'll be teaching you how to play When You Say Nothing At All by Ronan Keating. So for the basics of this song, you'll need your guitar in standard tuning and you won't need a capo. Now if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. So let's start off by learning the main riff that's played in the verses. Now this main verse riff is going to be based off of four chord shapes. We have a G chord, D, then a C add 9, and then we go back to a D. So starting with the G, we're going to be plucking the bass note, then we're going to pluck the 4th string, then we're going to go to the 2nd string and 3rd string. And that's it for the G chord. Then when we move to our D chord shape, you're going to be plucking the bass note, which is the 4th string, 3rd string, then we're going to go to the 1st string, and then we're going to pluck the 1st string again, but with your pinky finger here, you're going to place it down on the 3rd fret of the 1st string, and you're going to pluck that. So the D will sound like this. Our next chord shape was the C add 9, and we're going to pluck the bass note, which is the 5th string, then we're going to go to 3rd string, 2nd string, and back to the 3rd string. So just four plucks there, like that. Then finally our last chord shape goes back to a D. We're going to go fourth string, third string, second string, and the first string. But when you hit the first string, you're going to hammer on with your pinky finger onto the third fret, like that. So you don't pluck the first string twice, like that. You're going to pluck it once, but hammer on with your pinky finger. And that last D. And in total, our main riff will sound like this. So next we get to the pre-chorus. We're going to start our pre-chorus with a C add 9 chord shape. For our picking pattern, we're going to start with our bass note, then we're going to go 3rd string, 2nd string, 3rd string, then we go to the 1st string, and then we repeat the 3rd string, 2nd string, 3rd string again. So in total for the C add 9, Now our next chord is going to be a D chord shape and we're going to use the exact same picking pattern except our bass note differs here. For a D chord shape, our bass note is the 4th string. So we go 4th string, 3rd string, 2nd string, 3rd string, 1st string and then we go 3rd string, 2nd string, 3rd string again. So the D. Then for our next line, we're going to basically start with the first three chords of our verse riff. So we had a G, then we had a D, then we had a C add 9. And we're going to use that exact same picking pattern that we had in the verse as well, which will go like this. So we're just going to stop at that C add 9. You don't play that last D chord that's in the verse riff. Our next section will now be a D sus2. Now to play a D sus2, it's the same as a D, except you lift your middle finger up off that first string. For this D sus2, we're going to be playing that long picking pattern that we have in that first line. So bass note, third, second, third, first, third, second, third string. So we're going to do that once with the D sus2 chord, and then we're going to do it once with the D chord. So that will sound like this. And in total, the pre-chorus will sound like this. Now we get to the chorus and we just have three lines of chords here. 
Up here in the annotations, you'll see a little number above each chord that will just indicate the amount of strumming patterns that you'll need to play for that particular chord. Our strumming pattern for this chorus is going to be a very simple down, 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 up and in succession. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up. So our first line of chords is basically the same as the verse chords. So G, D, C add nine, and then back to D. And we're gonna play that line through twice. And you're gonna play each of those chords for one strumming pattern. So that first line will sound like this. Down, 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 up, down. Play that through twice, and then we get to our second line of chords. Our second line of chords is the same. It's G, D, C add nine, and D, except the last two chords, the C add nine and the D, are played for two strumming patterns each. So the second line of chords will sound like this. For our final line of chords, we have E minor seven. So you can keep your ring and pinky finger here on the third fret of the first and second strings. And you'll take your index and middle and put them on the second fret of the fifth and fourth strings. That's E minor seven. Then we have D slash F sharp. So you can put your index finger on the second fret of the sixth and your middle finger on the second fret of the third string. That's D slash F sharp. Then we go to C add nine and then we end this chorus with a D. For this first chorus, you'll just strum that D once, but for the second chorus, you'll play that for two strumming patterns. So that final line will sound like this. And in total, the full chorus. Alright, so now we get to our second verse, and the second verse is exactly the same as the first main verse riff. There is one little exception to this though. You play the main verse riff through twice, and then there's an alternate verse riff that just gets played once, and then we go back to the normal main verse riff. The alternate verse riff will go like this. We're going to be using an E minor 7 chord shape to begin with, and we're going to start by plucking the 4th string, 3rd string, 2nd string, then 3rd string. Then our next section will be using the 5th string, then we go 3rd string, 2nd string, 3rd string. Then we go to a C add 9 chord shape, and we're doing the exact same thing, so 5th string, 3rd string, 2nd string, 3rd string. And then we end with a D chord shape, and this will be very similar to the normal D in the main verse riff, which goes 4th string, 3rd string, 2nd string, 1st string, and you hammer on with your pinky finger. So the alternate riff goes like this. Now the second pre-chorus is exactly the same as the first pre-chorus. The only difference here is that we don't have our last D chord. So in the first pre-chorus we had D sus2 and then we did a D but in this second pre-chorus, we're just playing our D sus2, and then we're going straight into the second chorus. Now we get to the bridge, and the bridge has a key change here, so we're gonna be playing a whole different set of chords. So we're gonna start with the E major chord, then we're gonna to go to a B sus4. So to play that, it's basically just a B power chord, except you'll let your second and first strings ring out. That's B sus4, and then our next chord is an A sus2, so slide, your ring and pinky finger down to the second fret of the fourth and third strings. 
and they're just going to be strumming from the fifth string onwards. That's A sus2, and then we go back up to a B sus4. So that's our first line of chords, and we're going to play each chord for one strumming pattern, just like in the chorus. Then for our second line of chords, we have an A sus2 played for two strumming patterns, and the B sus4 played for two strumming patterns. So the bridge in total will sound like this. Then we get to our final chorus which differs to our other choruses a tiny bit. We're going to start with G, D, C add 9 and D for the first line. We're not going to play that twice though. Then for our second line of chords we go G, D slash F sharp and then E minor 7. But when you hit that E minor 7, you're just going to strum it once and let it ring out. There's no strumming pattern here. And then we're going to go to a C add 9 and there's no strumming pattern there either. For the rest of our chorus, we're not going to be playing any more strumming patterns. Everything is just going to be strummed once. So the third line of chords will be G, D, C add 9, and then D. And our final line of chords is E minor 7, D slash F sharp, C add 9, and then D. And then we're going to end the song on a G. So the final chorus will sound like this. So now I'm going to be playing the song in its entirety and I'm going to have a vocal track on top for some context. So feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to practice, play along too and see how you go.
Thanks guys, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. It'd mean the world if you could hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave your thoughts, comments, questions and requests for a Throwback Thursday below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.